Aquabeast, real name Peter Dudley, made his first and sadly only appearance in Aquaman 34, published in 1967. The story, titled Aquabeast the Abominable, was written by Bob Haney and penciled by Nick Cardi. In it, we meet spoiled and bored millionaire Peter Dudley, chilling on his yacht. Dudley has everything any man could ever wish for. Tons of money, power, beautiful women, and the freedom to do whatever he wants with his time. Yet despite all of this, Dudley isn't happy. It's only when he dives deep under the ocean that he feels somewhat at peace. One day, while diving, Dudley spots a strange form swimming in the ocean and decides to catch it, assuming it's some kind of exotic sea creature he can add to his collection. Exotic sea creature it certainly was, as it turns out to be an Atlantean, not just any Atlantean, but Queen Mera herself, wife of Aquaman. Dudley is immediately smitten with this sea woman, proclaiming her to be the most beautiful woman he's ever seen. Realizing she injured her arm while getting caught in his net, he decides to take Mera up to his yacht, where she'll receive medical aid. However, her husband, the King of the Seas, then show up and misinterpret Dudley's intentions. Aquaman rips the steel net with his bare hands, releasing his wife, then confronts Dudley, demanding an explanation. An explanation he gets, and also an apology for this crazy misunderstanding. Dudley then invites the both of them to his yacht, where Mira can receive the medical aid she needs. To this they agree. After they've left, Dudley calls in Dr. Hans Ludorf, who arrives two days later. Dudley has fallen deeply in love with Mira. You could say he's obsessed even, very obsessed. She only has eyes for her Aquaman though, so he reasons that the only way he can get her is if he becomes Aquaman. He thus plans to make himself into a clone of the Sea King. That's where the doctor comes in. Dr. Hans Ludorf will perform some kind of operation on Dudley that will make him into Aquaman's identical twin. However, as it always goes in these comics, the operation is a failure. Sure, he gets all of Aquaman's powers, as well as his dashing blonde curls, but he's also transformed into a hideous misshapen beast, Aqua Beast, as he himself proclaimed. Aqua Beast then jump into the ocean, driven by his mad obsession with Mera, and seeks out Atlantis. There he comes crashing right into the throne room, I guess they have really bad security, and kick the shit out of the king and then steal his wife. Poor Aquaman. To be fair though, Aquabeast is actually a lot stronger and tougher than him. Just look at how he swats away Aqualad like a fly. That's hilarious. With the prize in his possession, Aquabeast takes Mera to the Forgotten Place, a mystic underwater cavern forbidden by any Atlantean. He figures no one will follow them there, but he's wrong, as Aquaman will track his beloved Mera to the ends of the Earth. Turns out Aquaman ain't Aquabeast's main problem though, as a weird alien stranded on Earth resides in this cavern. This bizarre extraterrestrial decides to use Mera's brain matter to restart his malfunctioning computer. I guess he really needs to check Pornhub. Dudley naturally don't respond well to this, and the story ends with Aquabe sacrificing himself to save Mera from the wicked alien. The final bit of narration hints that Aquabe might return in the future, but he didn't. The character never showed up ever again. With Aquaman hitting theaters, I thought it would be really fitting to cover one of his obscure villains. It was about time anyway, as Aquaman is the only main DC hero I haven't covered yet. We've talked about Flash, Superman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, and for two years straight I talked about nothing else but Batman, essentially. The thing is though, out of all of these, Aquaman has the smallest rogues gallery by far. He's only got two prominent villains, you know which ones. So obviously you'll see him a lot less on this channel than the others. Anyway, Aqua Beast. This guy is basically Aquaman's Bizarro, an ugly misshapen clone of the hero who's in love with the hero's girlfriend. I wasn't thinking that when I read the comic though. This is something I realized later. While Aqua Beast and Bizarro have their similarities, they're done different enough so to not feel identical. For starters, Aqua Beast is a lot smarter than the dim-witted Bizarro. The transformation did not affect his intelligence. It certainly affected his sanity though. While his character is a bit silly, I still like him. You can't quite say he's evil, he just needs to learn to take no for an answer. It's it's pretty touching too just how devoted to Mera he is. He'd die for her just the same as Aquaman would. In fact, he does die for her. Of course, you can't entirely sympathize with this guy, as he does force himself on Mera. I almost feel it's a shame Aquabeast only appeared once. Would I want him to become a mainstay in Rogue's Gallery? No. But we could have gotten a couple more stories at least. It would have been nice to have seen Dudley reform and realize his mistakes. Maybe he could transform back into a human. But the ending we did get was pretty good too, and certainly very fitting. So I'm not really complaining too much. Much. If this guy was brought back someday, I'd say keep the Aquaman uniform but make him look more grotesque and deformed. Because seriously, the way he looks here is just goofy.
Anyway, if you want a fun Silver Age Aquaman story, then I highly recommend Aqua Beast's single appearance. And as always, remember, Arkham Asylum awaits you in the next video.